to bring something new in your life. This season, there's a word that's gone on the earth. When I talk about the plow, I'm talking about the word of God. The word of God is sharper, sharper, more powerful than any two-edged sword, able to cut asunder. Amen. Hey, it looks like we lost the deal. There we go. Praise the Lord. <laughs> able to cut, cut asunder between the soul and the spirit. Amen. It's the only thing that's Amen. It's going to judge us in heaven and judge us on earth. Amen. He said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. And so what God made, he sent his word to heal us our diseases and forgive us of all our iniquity. So the plow is the word of God has hit the earth. In every generation, God has a word. It's called a kairos. And that kairos is a word that comes in that that finds us and causes doors of opportunity to happen to you. We find this word in the New Testament when Paul is going on his missionary journey and God gives him the call of a Macedonian call. And even though he's on his own agenda, even though he's doing his own thing, he's going back visions or he's not doing anything wrong, he all of a sudden in the middle of the night he has a vision and God said, I'm opening a door of opportunity for you. Now sometimes when doors of opportunity are open, they don't look like doors of opportunity. Praise God, they look like a lot of work. Praise God. Sometimes they look real messy. And that's the reason why in this word of prophecy, God said, the plow has hit the ground. Everything's getting ready to get really, really messy. Praise the Lord. Amen. Look, as everything's getting stirred up, praise the Lord, nothing's going to sit still, but everything in your life is getting ready to look like a big mess. But out of it, God's going to refine you. Come on, refine you and perfect you because God refuses to leave you where you're at because God loves you more than you love yourself. Praise the Lord. Are you glad that God hasn't given up on you? But he said that I am the author and I am the finisher of your faith. Amen. That I believe it's time for us to make a new start. Come on, praise the Lord. Doug, you're going to have to do it. It's not letting me... Uh, it's not letting me do it, I don't think. I'll, I'll try it one more time. Let's see. Praise the Lord. How do I make a fresh start? Have me already to know how I make a fresh start. Amen. We make a fresh start by doing certain things in our life. The Word of God is a lamp unto our feet. In other words, it leads us into all truth that we might be free. And so when we follow the word of God, I mean, Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. So if I follow the word, I'm going to get victory. Remember what the word God says in Corinthians 15? Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For the word was given, and then not to condemn me, but it was given to bless me. The next scripture, Doug, Doug. Amen. Amen. John 10. Amen. God is not against you. That's number one. I'm going to say, God is not against you. Amen. Amen. Are you ready? Everybody say, it. God is not against me. God is not against me. But God is for me. God Amen. Is. God wants to see you get victory. God's not sitting up there trying to beat you up. God's trying to show you the way, the truth, and the light. Yeah. So in this season, realize when the plow hits the ground, it's not judgment against you. Don't take it personal that things get all messed up, but God's doing it to everything. Because everything's got a shame. Because God's coming back for a glorious church. He's coming back for a church that's walking in the giftings and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. He's coming back for a victorious church. It's His will that not will perish, but that all would have eternal life through Jesus Christ. Amen. For the thief came but to kill, steal, and destroy. But I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Amen. Amen. Brother Doug, next one. Amen. God does not hold your past against you. Amen. You hold your past against you. Yes. Amen. The Bible said when you became a new creature of Christ Jesus, all things old passed away and behold, all things became new. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm talking this because Wednesday night I was talking to the pastor's wife that was here from another church. And she asked me everywhere. She said, you made a statement. You said, your integrity will never surpass your anointing. And she said, I want to know what exactly is it that you're meaning by that? Well, I said, God's not judging you. Amen. Because God's in the forgiving business. Yes. But I said, the problem with not walking in integrity is... You don't believe in yourself. And if you don't believe in yourself, remember what he said, your faith has made you whole. And so if your self-esteem and self-worth, amen, doesn't believe what you're asking, 
nothing, you're never going to receive anything. Because the Bible said a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And think not that he will receive anything in the Lord. And so the thing about integrity and walking integrity is that God knows the human nature. We know what is right and we know what is wrong. We know what is moral and what is immoral. And so far if we're doing immoral things, we can't justify ourselves asking God for something. The same way, if you, let's say you, you don't do anything all week, going and asking your, your boss for a pay rate. Amen. He's not going to give you a pay rate because you don't deserve it. Why? Because you didn't do anything to get it. In the same way, if you don't make any changes in your life, if you don't do anything that you're, if you keep doing the same thing that you're doing, you were doing, nothing's going to change, but everything's going to stay the same. In fact, what's even worse is the things that you tolerate in your life are going to be the things that destroy you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. The things that you tolerate in your life are the things that are going to destroy you. Because it's the small foxes that spoil the vine. And that we need to begin to recognize those small things in our life that God wants to make some changes in our life. And understand this. God, not against you. He's your best friend. He came to show you the way to victory. He came to give you the helper to lead you and guide you and teach you into all truth. He's not sitting up there with a big hammer beating on you every time you do something wrong. He's asking you, make the changes you need to make that you'll quit doing the things you're doing so that you might begin to reap what you sow. Praise the Lord. Come on. Praise the Lord. So we're going to make some changes in our life this year. And we got to remember, God doesn't remember my past. He only remembers my future. Amen. Oh, come on. He told Jeremiah, before you were born, I knew you, and I ordained you, and I sanctified you for a purpose and a plan. Jeremiah 29. Purpose and a plan, and it's a good plan, saith the Lord. That God's not thinking about what I did a minute ago. God's thinking about what am I getting ready to do. Yeah. Oh, praise the Lord. God's more concerned about where I'm getting ready to go, but guess what's behind me I can't change. Right. But what is in front of me I can change. Yeah. Praise the Lord. My decisions and the things that I tolerate are the things that are crippling me from the victory that I'm wanting to receive. And therefore, I need to make some great judgments according to the word of God that I might know that I can get victory. So how do I make a fresh start? Let's start with the word start. Are you ready? Amen. Stop making excuses. Amen. Quit blaming everybody else. It's your fault that we got like this. It's your fault that I don't have anything. And realize that every one of us are responsible to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Yeah. That it's not anybody else's responsibility to follow God for me, but I need to follow God myself. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. And I need to make sure that I am led by the Spirit of God. If you want a fresh start in your life, you have to stop making excuses for my failures. Amen. I have to stop blaming other people, and I've got to stop seeing myself as the victim of my circumstances. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I wish you'd have told me. Amen. Always pointing our finger instead of pointing our finger. Praise the Lord. Always looking at somebody else for what they didn't do instead of recognizing that it's my responsibility. Come on. It's my responsibility to make the decisions and the changes in my life. It's nobody else's. Praise the Lord. That I, God said he would show me the way, the truth, the life. And that there's a door of opportunity for me. But as God is walking, he said, the steps of a righteous man and woman are ordered of the Lord. Yeah. So if I do good, good things are going to happen. Praise the Lord. That's the favor of God. If I do that which is right and set on the side of God and man, doors are going to begin to start opening for me. I never forget, I told you, I was in prison. And I mean, I got all mad about these evangelists. And I was watching TV and Oral Roberts was on the TV. And I remember watching Oral Roberts and I saw all those big buildings. And I saw the city of Pay. And I remember, ah, yeah, yeah. all this thing. And I was like, man. And all of a sudden, God just stopped me and he just said to me, he said, why do you always get so mad at success? 
He said, do you think that every person that's successful did something wrong to be successful? He said, I told you my word, the power to get wealth is in my hand. Amen. And then if you do good, good things will happen to you. He said, I said in my word about all I wish is you prosper even as your soul does prosper. Yes. But the reason why you can get mad at success, Ron, is because you're not successful. Amen. Oh, man. Man. Because you see, you're blaming somebody else. Because you say, well, they got a great guy I didn't get. They got something I didn't get. No. The door of opportunity in America is still here. For those that apply themselves, the door of opportunity, great things can happen to you. You just got to believe God, that God is with you. You got to challenge your faith. And you got to, number one, quit making excuses why you can't do it. But my Bible tells me I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Quit using your past to cause it to cripple your future. Yeah. Yeah. And quit allowing circumstances around you to dictate to you what you're getting ready to do. Follow the word of God and it will be a lamp unto your feet. Yes. And God will cause doors of opportunity to happen for you. All you got to do is be willing to follow God and let God be God. Amen. Amen. The next one, Brother Doug, Proverbs 28, 13. Whoever conceals their sin does not prosper, but the one who confesses and renounces them will find mercy. Amen. Oh. When I'm unwilling to admit my faults, when I'm unwilling to blame myself, then I'm unwilling to recognize or to see what I need to do to make these changes in my life. And so therefore, I'm concealing the problem. Are you hearing me? Because if you're in a bad place, you've got a problem. You might not know you've got a problem, but you've got a problem. Amen. And it's so real, it's holding you captive in your life, and you're miserable because of that problem. And so therefore, the only thing that's going to cause that problem to change is something that you do to make a change. Quit waiting for a miracle to come through the mailbox or a miracle for somebody else to come make your miracle, but start being a miracle. My Bible says I can do all things. And he said, as many that are led by the Spirit, they are the sons and daughters of God, equal heirs with Jesus Christ. Number one reason why people fell in life is because they do not prepare for their problems. Praise the Lord. What do you mean number one problem is I don't prepare? Because you know what you're weak in. You know what you're vulnerable with. The Bible said resist the devil and he will flee from you. So build safeguards around you. We are up visiting somebody that was in jail. And I talked to them and I said, you know, when you get out, there's something that you've got to do. You've got to build safeguards around you. So that you can stand. Because until you identify that you've got a problem, you're never going to change your problem. Right. And when you identify it, then something can start happening because God's going to be with you. Amen? Amen. 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 The next one, Brother Doug. It's froze. Are you completely off over there, too? I'm working on it. <laughs> that was a liar. It's down? Well, praise the Lord. Yeah. You trying to get it back up? We need to pray for our internet. <laughs> <laughs> praise the Lord. Amen. 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 There's another version that says that Proverbs 28, 13. It says, A man who refuses to admit his mistakes can never be successful. But if he confesses and forsakes them, then he gets another chance. Amen. Oh, I like that. Don't you hear me? Yeah. Amen. 
a man who refuses to admit his mistakes can never be successful. But if he confesses him and forsakes him, he gets another chance. Amen. Everybody say, God wants to give me a fresh start. He said, Behold, Isaiah, remember? Isaiah said, Behold, I do a new thing. And the old is going away, and behold, it's going to be new. So you're a confession away, amen, from taking a new direction and having victory in Jesus Christ. Psalms 20 and 7 says, A sensible man watches for problems and prepares to meet them, but a fool never looks ahead and suffers the consequences. I mean, there's consequences to my decisions. I mean, I would say that. Amen. There's consequences to my decisions or the things I said. A sensible man watches for problems. This is verse. Watches for problems, but appears to meet them. But the fool never looks ahead and suffers the consequences of the decisions you make. The things that you're facing are on the decisions that you make. So if you want to change what's getting ready to happen, you've got to change how you're making your decisions in your life. Amen. So the first thing you've got to do is you got to start. Quit making excuses. Praise the Lord. Amen. Everybody say, quit making excuses. Amen. Amen. And the T is start. Are you ready? Take an inventory of my life. Praise the Lord. Are you right now where you wanted to be? Are things happening for you like you wanted to happen? Or are things gradually slipping by you? And you feel like the door of opportunity has passed you by? Well, I got news for you. For one thing, don't make that excuse because God said all things are possible. And this is the day that the Lord has made. Yeah. That you're one step from admitting that God, I need your help. That God, I know that I can do it. Amen. But I got to take an inventory of my life and begin to realize what are my dreams? What are the plans that I have? Amen. The next one, Brother Doug. Amen. Amen. I mean to evaluate all my experiences, learn from my mistakes. Failures can be your friend or it can be your worst enemy. Oh, the next one, Brother Doug. Amen. Boy, this is a man. This thing right here is completely off. Praise the Lord. Okay, we're already, we're already past the other. I'm sorry. Amen. I need to take an inventory of my life and examine, uh, evaluate the experiences where I've been and begin to look at my The Bible said, your attitude is, is a divine expression of your inward emotions or it's the librarian of your past. Does somebody get that? Yeah. So if I have an attitude about something, that's because there's usually something in my past that I'm holding on to that's keeping me from going to the new. And so if my attitude is a librarian in my path, it means that I've got to make changes in the today of those things that happened yesterday because if I keep doing the same thing over and over again, thinking I'm going to get different results, that's insanity. So therefore, I've got to begin to evaluate, amen, what is going on. I've got to take an inventory of those things that I did in the past so that I don't do it again. Amen. What's that old saying? Uh, I did it the first time, shame on me. I did this. I mean, second time, shame on First time, shame on you. Second time, shame on me. I mean, that I didn't learn from the first time. We keep repeating the same mistakes over and over and over again because we fail to make changes in our life to adapt to what's going on so that God can do something in our life. I want to give you an example of that. You're spiritually, we were more spiritually aware of God and His movement when you first got born again than you are today. You were more knowledgeable of, the, of what God was wanting you to do. You cleaned up easier when God would just speak. You simply just do what God. But you've got so complex in your relationship with God that now it takes an act of God and a move knocking you on the floor. But for you to even understand the conviction and power of God that is trying to transform you and to bring you to the plan that God had. I found that baby Christians are more sensitive to God than those that have been born again for a long time. And so therefore, you find that the majority of workers in the church are not the older people, they're the younger people. Amen. And when I say young, I'm not talking about age. I'm talking about age of being born again. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise but the older people make excuses. Well, I used to do that, but I don't do it anymore. And they give you testimonies of yesterday instead of testimonies, this is what God is doing in my life. 
And we need to have fresh testimonies. The Bible said, I know by the blood of the Lamb and the word of my testimony. So therefore, we need to take inventory of our life. Amen. And we need to begin to separate ourselves and let God begin to walk us through and the steps of our inventory of our life. And then it began to do what needs to be done. And then the next word is A. And that means to act in faith. Amen. This is a third step in getting a fresh start. Act in faith. And you have to launch out into a new territory. If you want to change anything in your life of faith. Go to the next one, Doug. Act in faith. Amen. Without faith, it's impossible to what? Please, Please God. But by faith, the worlds were framed together. What happened then? If people began to step out on the word of God, things began to start happening because the Bible said, amen, faith calls for things not as though they are. Why? Because faith is the substance of those things hoped for, but the evidence of those things not yet seen. Jesus is going to tell the woman that was blind. Then he touched her eyes and said, according to your faith, let it be to you. You can't operate on somebody else's faith. you got to operate on your own faith. Your faith makes you whole. That's what he said, the woman with the issue of blood. Your faith today has made you whole and provided what you needed for your miracle. We need to step out of the boat. Amen. Go to the next one, Doug. We need to step out and begin to start believing God that God is opening a door of opportunity for me today. But what does the word say? Amen. But what say of it? The word is not even at thy mouth. It is in thy heart. That is the word of faith that we preach. That if you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord, Amen. Believe in your heart. God has raised him from the dead, and thou shall be saved. Help me already be saved. Amen. Yes. So that means change means I have to admit my wrongs. The Bible said he's faithful and just to forgive me of my sins, and he will cleanse me from all unrighteousness. So that means if I'm going to do the beginning, there's only one way for me to get it. I've got to confess my fault. The first thing the Holy Spirit was sent to do was reprove men of sin. Until I get the sin on my way, because the Bible said sin separates you from God or separates you from the new things that God wants to do. So I've got to become a new creature in Christ Jesus. Amen. I don't care how long you've been born again. I don't care how many times you've worked in the gifts of the Spirit. I don't care how many testimonies as you got in your path, if you ain't got a new victory in your life, if you don't have a new testimony of God doing something in your life, if you're not hearing a fresh word of man in the day, you've already stepped, you've already put yourself in the back of the boat and nothing's going to happen to you. But God is wanting to take you out to new places that you might have new things happen to go to. Now have new things happen to life. Because if we refocus, amen, but what does it mean refocus? Get myself back to seeing what I'm not seeing. Praise the Lord. Apparently I'm not seeing and we're getting blindsided on everything that's going on and we'll keep fighting the past instead of moving to the future. Every time I take one step forward, I'm taking two steps back. Why? Because I need to refocus my thoughts and my wants to change life. I've got to decide I need a miracle. I need a move of God. I need to step out by faith and I need to start believing God because you cannot change what you cannot see. If you don't know that you need to do it, you you don't know where you're going. Praise the Lord. Amen. Jesus, they went out fished all day long and they caught nothing. And Jesus tells him by faith, go out there and tells him exactly where to go. Where? Go to the deep, not where you were, but go another 200 yards out there. And this time, let your net down on the right side, not the left side, not the back of the boat, not the front of the boat, but let your net on the right side. And if you'll follow these orders and put your net on the right side, then you're going to catch a lot of fish. Are you hearing me? And that's the same with you. You're not really following God all the way. You're only giving God a little bit. And so therefore, you're getting a little bit. By the same measure that you give is the same measure you'll receive. When I decide that I'm going to follow God with all my heart and mind and so and sell out to God, that's when God will start working some miracles in my life. And then go to the next one, Doug. Oh, there it is right there. Here we got it. Romans 2 24. I will, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you might prove what is the good, what is the good, the acceptable, and the perfect will of God. That means that I've got to change my thinking that I might have something new happen in my life. So my stinking thinking is what's causing me problems in my life right now, and God is wanting to give me a miracle. Yeah. 
How many of y'all want a miracle in here today? How many of y'all want something new to happen in your life? But see, I got to stop making excuses. Amen. I got to take an inventory of my life. I got to remember what it was that God said to me and the things that God called me to do. And I got to quit being double minded in them. I've got to start working them. Because my strength is in that word. My power is in that word. Heaven and earth will pass away, but that word will never pass away. He told Jeremiah, I put this word in you, and this word will work. And if you work inside this word, you can pull walls down, and you can build walls up. Whatever I put in you, it has the ability to do everything that I said it would do. And we need to get back doing the basics of God and doing what God has called us to do. The Bible said in Mark 16, 20, they preached everywhere and God worked with them. Amen. With signs, wonders, and miracles. Praise the Lord. Amen. That God's concerned about souls being saved and lives being transformed. But I've got to do that. How do I change what I'm thinking? He said above all, Proverbs 4, 23, guard your heart above all else for it determines the course of my life. And so as a man thinketh, so shall it be. Amen. Whatever you're thinking about, you're getting ready to do. You know, it's not really hard for me to figure out what my grandkids are going to do. I just sit back and watch them. And if they see something and they look at it long enough, oh, Jonah, sometimes he'll go over and he'll go like this and he'll go away like that and wait till I'm not looking. And when I'm not looking, whoa, he's right back over there. Why? Because I should have already known he was going there. Come on, praise the Lord. Amen. You already know you're going there before you go there. Amen. So build some safeguards so you don't go there. Amen. Put some things in your life to build you up so you quit making those repeated mistakes in your life. There's some things you cannot do by yourself. Amen. You need somebody to help you. You need a counselor in your life. You need somebody to walk beside you. That's the reason why I said pray the prayer of faith, confessing our faults to one another. Amen. In James 5, for the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man of faith. There's things that I need help with. There's things that I need to, somebody to walk with me. That's what I want to engage with this year. Is those problems that we keep facing over and over again. I want to win some victories today. How about you? I want to win some victories in our life. We've got to refocus. We've got to get back in doing what God has called us to do. Because an attitude is an inward feeling. It is an expression that outward action expresses. And what's going on in the inside is getting ready to come out on the outside. Amen. Woo! In other words, some people you can see it all over their face before they ever do it. Yeah. Praise the Lord. It's just that we're not aware this stuff is getting ready to happen. Yeah. And that we need to be expressly awakened to what's going on around us so that we can make better decisions based on the Word of God because God's got a plan for you and it's a good plan. And He wants to burst something in you. You see, the word is always fruitful. Psalms 1, 1 through 3 says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the godly, nor resteth in the way of the sinner, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and he in his law he shall meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth fruit in its season, whose leaf shall not wither, and wherever it goes, it shall prosper. How many are ready to yeah. prosper? So that means that if I tie myself and I begin to make these decisions this year to begin to separate myself from those things uh, that are causing me about not just people, I'm talking about addictions. I mean, Lord, if you're an alcoholic, you don't need to hang around people that drink. I mean, whatever your problem is, you need to separate from that and get away from that and begin to guard your anointing and guard your life because God's got a plan for you and you need to start making changes in your life to cause this to happen in your life. Amen. But the word is not you. It's even how your mouth. It's the word of faith that will save your soul. In fact, I was talking to uh, Pastor Rod from Victory today. He came over and he was talking to us. And I made a mention of this, but he brought it up again because he's getting ready to do some really uh, bold moves this year. And he was talking to me and he said, you know, he said, God really began to work on me this year. That I wouldn't spend enough time in the word. And he said, you know what? I was just thinking those things. All of a sudden, 
uh, one of my colleagues sent me, I think it was uh, the Assembly of God, sent him a deal. And sent him a little uh, deal in the mail. And it was basically, it was a survey or a, uh, a what they are they're real popular right now, uh, uh, a poll. I guess, poll among those who read the Word of God. This is what they came up with. A person that goes to church once a week and just hears the word once a week and just hears the word, there's nothing really, any measure, anything changing in their life. A person that hears the word two times a week or reads it, hears it one week and studies it one time a week, there's a little blip, but very, very little. You can't hardly see it. And the third time a person reads the word in a week, all of a sudden it starts coming a little higher up on the Richter shelf. And all of a sudden you begin to start reading the needle. But then on the fourth day, oh, this car. On the fourth day, that needle jumps all the way to 60%. And 60%, I want to tell you what they found out. People that read the word, 60% of their marriages stay together. Amen. Are you hearing me? Amen. 60% of them are living according to the word of God and they're happy. So we're finding the power in the spoken word of God that is living in you. If you abide in me and my word abides in you, you can ask whatsoever you ask and it should be given to you. What is the word of God? It transforms me. Come on, friend. It taking me from one state of mind to another state of mind. The Bible said I'm washed by the water of the word. Praise the Lord. So we're finding everything that I'm talking about today. Quit making excuses and start finding the truth for the truth is in the word of God. Yeah. Your answers yeah. are inside this Bible that you got in your hand. That word is truth to you and it will never fail you but it will accomplish what God said it would accomplish. Jesus said man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. If you're feeling yourself not slipping backwards and you need to move forward, get in the word. Come on, praise the Lord. Get in the word. Amen. It is the bread of life. He tells Jeremiah, eat this thing. Put it inside of you. Get out of your belly flows rivers of what? Living water. Amen. So therefore, if we want victory, we've got to learn how to get in the word, study the word, and that's what we want to do. Every day I'm going to gauge your life and send you something from the word of God. Amen. And if you'll read that word, you'll hear that word every day. Seven days a week, you can hear the word of God. That one scripture a day might be the daily pill you need to deliver you from an addiction of alcoholism or drugism, deliver you from pornography. It'll bring you from, from going to hell to going to heaven. Amen. Amen. It's the victory that you need. The word is fruitful. It will always never return void, but it will accomplish what it does. The last word in the word start is the word trust. And the word trust, I put like it, Proverbs 3, 5 and 7. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes, but trust the Lord. Amen. Have faith in God. Amen. If you have faith in God, you can speak to the mountain. If you doubt not, that which is in your heart, the word of God cleanses me and gets me in the right position that I can get out of the boat. Yes. Come, Amen. On. Come on, somebody. Gets me in the right position that I can get out of the boat. Yes. We don't really catch this, but when Peter was in the boat and they were all in the boat, Peter's the one that looked at Jesus and said, can I get out of the boat? And Jesus said, come on. He said, since you said so, come on. Since you said so, I'm getting out of the boat. <laughs> Don't get out of the boat. Not unless he says so. Praise the Lord. Don't start doing something not unless he says so. The Bible said, him that is led by the Spirit. Praise the Lord. And the Spirit will bear witness with the Word. But I'm telling you, God's looking for some water walkers. He's looking for some people that will confess the Word and the Word not return void. He's looking for some people that speak the Word to the devil and the devil get behind me in the name of Jesus. He's looking for some people that will challenge this world through the Word of faith and believe that God, with God, all things are possible. So the conclusion will have this. I gotta stop making excuses. I gotta take an inventory of my life. I gotta act in faith. I gotta reflect.
focus my heart and I got to trust God. Come on, somebody. I got to stop making, come on, say it with me. I got to stop making excuses. Come on. I got to stop making excuses. Yeah. Why I can't. And start saying I can do all things through Christ as things as me. I got to take an inventory. I like to say like, I got to get real. Amen. Come on, praise God. Come on. I got to get real. Yeah. Amen. I got to quit lying to myself. And I got to wake in and realize if I got sin in my life, I need to get it out of my life. I need to take an inventory and realize, am I happy? Come on. Am I happy? Is my dream become a reality? Have I become what I thought I would become? If I haven't, then I've got to realize I need to do something. Yes. I've got to run. I've got to act in faith. Yes. I've got to believe that the Word of God says, and I guess God to start becoming a doer of the Word yes. instead of a hero only. Amen. 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 we got to, re we got to refocus our thoughts and get them back on biblical principles. I was thinking about this, and I said something to Daryl at the men's breakfast Saturday. I said, it's so simple that it seems too complex. But we got so complex in the Word of God, it's the basic principles that the church is missing that's causing the church to miss the boat. Amen. Praise the Lord. Honor me with on my Sabbath and keep it holy. Yes. Amen. Amen. The basics. That we have a problem with. Because we won't be willing and obedient to do what God said to do. Amen. 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 By embracing and engaging these principles. I am energizing myself for the bold moves and the changes I'm getting ready to make. Yes. Somebody that I get this. I want you ready. This is the whole thought line of this whole sermon. Embracing the change by engaging myself and energizing myself to make a bold move to change. Yes. Come on, pray. It ain't just going to happen. I've got to do something radical. Come on, somebody. I can't sit back waiting on somebody else anymore to do it for me. I can't wait for a, a door to open. Well, when God opens the door, and God's telling you, kick the door down and walk through and possess it in the name of Jesus. Quit waiting for somebody else to give it to you and go take it in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Start believing God and say, I can do all things, but it's in the time of boat move. Yeah. And I was watching Pastor Rod. He's been sitting there, and they've been in the same boat for the last almost two years. And nothing's grown. Nothing's really happened. And he came in and picked up the food that we had for him. And they get ready to leave, all of a sudden, he just started preaching. And I mean, he doesn't get very loud very often. Only like, all right, but well, this is really close. But I mean, all of a sudden, he was coming out of his bed. Yes. And he was shouting, the word of God says it. We've been here too long. I've been stagnant too long. I'm making a bold move. He said, I ain't got the money, but I never had the money. God will supply my money. Come on, somebody. Yes. All of a sudden, I started hearing something.
We came down to this building. We bought this land. We had zero money in the bank. We had a crowd smaller than this crowd. And I was walking that ground. The sign was down. I was coming down through the road. And God just said, stop. So I stopped. I got out and the grass was all grown up. This thing looked like a wilderness. I mean, nobody wanted it. In fact, it had been for sale. I don't know how many years it had been for sale. Nobody wanted it because it was so grown up. Had a little road getting down about 10 feet in the road. You could tell the road kept going, but you couldn't get down it. Because, I mean, there was trees, everything in here. And I got out and the sign was on the ground. We had to find it on the ground. It had a number on it. I said, God, this place? Yeah, yeah this place. <laughs> so I called the owner and touched his manes. He, he forgot to even had a sign out. Because so, nobody wanted it. Nobody wanted it. And I said, well, how much you want? <laughs> he said, I want $55,000 for the five acres. Well, it was 20 something acres, acre and quarter, acre point two and three point, but all together it was 5.5 acres. Together, both the 1.2 and this one, which I needed five acres to leave, $55,000. Well, we ain't got no money in the bank. <laughs> Our daily tithing wouldn't even pay the payment of $55,000. Yeah. Right. He came out and met me, and we walked and we talked over the place. And got there, I said, You know, I want it. Yeah. And he said, The first man who said to me, he said, Well, how do you want to pay for this? <laughs> and I said, I had to stop it. He said, You got the money? I said, No. He said, Could I really want that? He said, you want to go to the bank? He said, you're going to borrow the money? I said, no. <laughs> I said, I finally came out and said, God will provide. There you go. That's what I said, God will provide. Amen. He looked at me like I was crazy. But we went ahead and wrote the contract. I think he was looking the whole time once it was gone. Because all the way up until the last day before we bought the property, we were, we, it was amazing what God did in 30 days. And he gave me 30 days. We got within the last 48 hours. We were $10,000 down. He said, you got it all yet? I said, no, but I said, I was inside. I was like, we're within leaping distance. <laughs> From where we started, we're within leaping distance. But we didn't let our faith waver as a, as a church. We decided to make a bold move. And I watched little, I'm talking about women that were living on Social Security. I watched them challenge two and three thousand dollars. I look at them and said, how are you gonna get that? And I watched God perform miracle after miracle after miracle. Because you see, when the church took a bold step, they took a bold step. Amen. And when we both came in the power of agreement because the church is his, and then the church responds, not the pastor, but the church responds, then I watched God's supernatural provision begin to happen because he said, I'm the head of this church. Amen. And I watched God begin to, and when it came down, we had every penny. Yes, Lord. Now we have the land, and we pay cash for it. But we couldn't afford to do anything. So Doug Muse, boy, Paul, Doug brought an old Massey Ferguson with a brush off over here. We couldn't even see. Oh, Paul got on top. Paul wanted to drive because Paul wants to do everything. Paul got on that thing. He took off. We heard, I mean, these little trees like that. Wah, 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 wah. All of a sudden, we heard Paul. We went running down there. He'd gone off and there was a gully. And he woo! Went off in that gully. And I watched that boy so excited he wouldn't even get off that tractor. He beat that brush off. He broke that thing to pieces before it was over with. But he was cutting trees down with a brush off. I didn't think he could cut down with a brush off. Nothing stopped him. Nothing stopped him.
we got enough clear here. I got a little some bulldozer and we, Amber came down and we, we plowed this ground. I got this ground there and then Bob came on later on and finished it up. But Amber knocked down the first part. And we got, the first thing we did was we put a 40 foot container we rented and put it out here on the dirt. And that became our Joseph house. People came down here, and I remember Carla watching. She'd be sitting in there. No Carla had been there, and I mean, be ice cold. I mean, she'd be sitting in that little that chair. If you ever see Carla, she's all by herself, and she'd have this food all around her. She'd make them carriers. There wasn't no carriers back then. And they'd come in, and she'd be 40, 50 families. And I'd watch her, and I'm just in amazement, the dedication, the time she gave to the Lord. And then that's where God spoke to me. And I remember I was victory in our leadership deal. And I was talking to the board. And I told them, I said, you know, God spoke to me. Not to build a church, but to build a Joseph house. They said, you can't do that. We're living in, we're renting a building on the highway and we're, we're paying rent. Don't own nothing. We're renting everything. We own a piece of land with nothing on it. No money in the bank. Everything ready. And God said, I want you to build me. I want you to build me a food wire. I said, I want you to build something and feed. He said, I want to take care of you. Take care of the people. I'll take care of you. Amen. So the first building we built, we raised up the money. By now, our faith is going for our churches. But we raised up another 30000 and we built that Joseph house. We opened that Joseph house and we came next door. We raised another 30000 and we built that next building. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Same people. But now their faith is such a level, there is no challenge that we can't conquer. Amen. But guys, now everybody's on board because they're watching God move. They're watching God doing something. Are you hearing me? Sometimes when the enemy has got you so backed up that it don't look like there's any way and everything's dying. You know what it takes? It takes a bold move of God. It takes somebody to say, my God is able. I'm getting out of this boat. Dies never sweet. I'm going to make a difference. Amen. But we got to do it together. I want to make some bold moves. Yes. We've got a bold church. Yes. Yes, Lord. We've boldly gone where nobody would go. Amen. Brother Rod tried to get victory to go to Haiti and nobody really wanted to go to Haiti. <laughs> 285,000 people had died in 45 seconds or 287,000 people. Nobody wanted to go because you couldn't even get in the country. Right. I get a call from Paul Ross. He said, you think you guys are going to go to Haiti? <laughs> I said, well. <laughs> he said, I want you to go with me first. And let's go look at it. So we come in the Dominican Republic and we come across because you can't even get into Haiti. We come into Haiti. They're, burying, they're burning bodies in the street. Every building is captivated. Lord, I love a child. We're out there and we're looking at different things. He took down the acres that we ended up clearing. He said, what do you think? I said, there's solid rock. <laughs> 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 they didn't you know, have a piece of equipment. He said, what do we do? I said, I said, well, I think we got the Paul Bunyan's yet. <laughs> <laughs> Brother Doug, Brother Bob. Brother Heath, my son Michael, Brother Jim. We went out there in 107 degree weather. We worked for a solid week and we laid a foundation that 50 missionaries ended up staying for two years, taking care of those kids. 50 missionaries every week were coming from somebody in America and staying in the buildings that we built. And all of a sudden, we started sending food in, and we started sending food in. They couldn't get no food in the nation. You know what we did? We found a tug ship in, in, in Louisiana. This tug ship could haul four containers at a time, and it taken three days from the time he'd take off. But when he got there, we set up a big tent on the property, and we took that. He pulled that, he pulled that tugboat right up to the land, let down the front of it. We take a truck, and we pull that thing off, and we had all that food in that tent. And that's how we fed Haiti. When nobody could get in it with boats sitting out in the harbor 
and nothing could get in because the government was shut down. But we boldly went where nobody could go. Somebody hear me. God's looking for some water walkers, some bold movement people that are not moved by fear or compromise, but are ready to take on this world. Amen. But there's greater is he that's in us than him that's in the world. Yeah. But I need some bold people yeah. to take the next step of faith with me. I need some people that believe that God is able and that we can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I need some people that will energize and embrace the move of God that we're getting ready to move. I'll tell you what's going to happen. It's going to energize you more. Amen. You say, we keep waiting for an outward energization, pastor, or pray for. No, energy comes from the inside. Amen. When I get excited about something that's going to burn, it comes from the inside. It's emotion that comes from the inside. It comes out of that. Then you can't shut me up. You want something new? Let's break some ground. Amen. Amen. Let's break some ground this year. Amen. Let's break some ground this year. Amen. 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 I'm going to be talking about different grounds. I'm not going to talk about this one. We're going to make some bold moves. Amen. But I need some bold people. Yes. Hallelujah. But you better count the cost because I'm not telling you that it's easy. But I'm telling you this, when God comes back and men see your bold moves, it's bold moves that we remember. Amen. It's bold moves that change the course of humanity. Right. And if there was ever a time that we needed a bold move of God in America, it's right now. Right. Amen. How many of y'all read? We need a revival in America? Yes, we do. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Woo! We got to think out of the box. Yeah, we got to get God ideas. Somebody, we got to get some God ideas yeah. on some God movements. Amen. So the first thing we got to do is we need to pray. Amen. Come on, we need to pray. Help me all read that. We need to pray. Yeah. We need to get some God ideas. Praise the Lord. Yes. You know, I don't know what's a God idea. Because if it ain't any bigger than you, I know it's not a God idea. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. If it don't cost nothing, it ain't a God idea. I've never had God give me something I already had in my hand. He always said, give me what's in your hand, I'll give you what's in my hand. And I'm like, well, ha! <laughs> what's he got in his hand? A whole lot bigger than what I got in my hand. I can't even hold it up. So we're going to make some bold moves. How many are ready to make some bold moves? Everybody stand to the feet. God was getting ready to make bold moves every time he was. There was a separation of people. Yeah. <laughs> Are you hearing me? Every time God gets ready to make a bold move, there's those that will go and those that won't go. Yeah. There'll be those that get out of the boat and those that won't get out of the boat. That's right. yeah. And nobody can make you do it. you got to do it yourself. Yeah. It takes an inward witness and a commitment to God Regardless of what anybody else does, I'm going to do it. Amen. I'm going to do it. I'm going to get up every day and I'm going to pray. Every day I'm going to get up and I'm going to worship you. Every day I'm going to apply myself Amen. to the Word of God. And I'm going to have something new this year. In fact, you say, I confess with my mouth. And I believe in my heart that Jesus Christ was the Son of God. That he is God with us. And that through my faith right now, I am saved. I am delivered. I am sanctified. And I am cleansed. And I am in right standing with God. I believe in a miracle. I believe that all things are possible. And God, I want to make a bold move this year for Jesus. Woo! I want to make a bold move for Jesus this year. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Sometimes bold moves are not as hard as we think they are. 
You know one of the bold moves in the Word of God was Hezekiah. The Bible said Hezekiah was sick unto death. And it was on his end deal. The prophet came and said, Hezekiah, tonight you're going to die. And Hezekiah looked at him and said, I'm not ready to die. The prophet left and Hezekiah crawled out of the bed, crawled down the stairway, crawled to the altar of God, and he called out to God. And God said, he called back the prophet and said, sorry, you got to go change what I did to you. Are you hearing me? Yeah. All right, somebody Glory. might get this. But guys, man will tell you it's too late. Glory. But God said, I told you all things are possible. Yeah. I will do what I said I would do. Yeah. Woo. Woo. Somebody, somebody yeah. might get this. You're not too old. Yeah. You're not too broke. Yeah. God wants to use you. Yeah. Yeah. God wants to use you. Quit letting everything tell you you can't and start saying I can and I will and I will be what God said I can be. Woo. I will be blessed in 2020. Come on. I will be blessed in 2020 and I will win souls in the kingdom. Amen. 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 Ain't God good? Ain't God good all the time? Amen. Ain't God good? All the time. Take this with you. But I want to encourage you. If you haven't been doing a daily reading plan in the Word of God, hook up with a daily reading plan in the Word of God. And start, I don't care if it's one chapter, three scriptures, read a little word every day. Amen. Amen. When I send you my email, I'm trying to keep them really short, not wrong, but it's something, a thought line, something. And I send you a text. We're going to be texting, so you'll be getting a text or you'll be getting an email. Might be in both. I don't know. Whatever we do, but we're going to saturate. Praise God. Hallelujah. For 20 years, we've been feeding families all over Oklahoma. And we've never captivated other than when they come here and we pray for them one time a week. Have we ever really engaged them in their daily agenda? What's going to happen when we engage all these labors we've done for 20 years? I hope somebody's got a vision. What's going to happen? What's going to happen? 20 years of faithfulness. 20 years of giving. 20 years of sacrifice. But see, all those don't mean nothing if you don't engage. You have a pot in your back door full of catfish and full of bass. And if you never put the, if you never put the bait in the pot and you never sit there long enough, you're never going to catch nothing. But you can say all your life, you got a pond, you got a fishing pole, you got the bait, but you ain't caught nothing. Yeah. I want to catch some fish this year. What about you? Amen. 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 God bless you. Remember, Jesus is Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory. 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 Yeah. Nine, nine o'clock. I went to nine o'clock Wednesday night. Wednesday night, man. We had, this, we had more people Wednesday night than we got right now. Wednesday night, yeah. Uh, Angie came out and uh, all that. Thank you. They ain't me, man. They give me preaching yeah. on. A couple of ladies that sat behind us the other Sunday. I don't know that. Yeah. A little woman. That, yeah. yeah. Oh, she preached. Yeah, she, uh, she texted me. She, she, uh, somebody came out here from her. Oh, boy. I think I made it. I'm going to see. All right, we're going to look. So